chapter two. It's going to be a lot of hard work, but I will not rest until I'm reunited with Hattie. I spin around and around and I stretch up and I leap up again and again. I race back and forth from one end of the eating place to the other, stopping only once to lick a tasty drip on the floor. Mmm, vanilla. At last, there's only one thing left to do. I whine in my most pitiful voice. Hey, everybody, remember me? I'm all alone and I'm trapped. Finally, my efforts pay off. Hattie rushes over, her backpack strapped to her back. Her face is weary and happy at the same time. Ready? She asks. I'm so ready, I'm so ready, I bark, my tail going wild. Hattie removes the gate and I sprint into the lounging place. I'm too late, the evil humans are gone. And so is the rest of our stuff. But the good news is, I'm back with Hattie. If she's leaving, I'm leaving too. My chest heaves with excitement as Hattie clips my leash to the collar. Fetch man and food lady head for the door, lugging suitcases. I pull Hattie after them, down the hall and into the elevator, where we all go. The way. Down to the bottom. Ding! When we get to the car, Hattie opens the door. I shoot inside before anybody can stop me. I lick Hattie's cheek. It's wet and salty. It's all right. I'm here to protect you, I bark. Nothing can go wrong now. There's a little fire hydrant. That kind of signals a break. We zoom along for a long, long time. I climb higher on Hattie's chest and I poke my head out the window. We're on a road that's slower and bumpier with trees that are leafier, smells that are flowerier, and the air that is breezier. We pull into a grassy park and stop. As the car goes quiet, Fetchman smiles and squeezes Food Lady's hand. My paws are all over the window. Somebody let me out! Hattie grabs my leash and we burst out of the car. I bury my nose in the cool, refreshing grass. It smells of wild animals like squirrels, chipmunks, mysterious birds, and not one single pigeon. I raise my head, my ears perked and listening, but I don't hear any traffic rumbling or honking or snorting or music drifting from cars or stores. All I hear are birds chirping and squirrels chattering. A motor buzzes in the distance. Short humans squeal somewhere down the street. What is this place? Fetch man and food lady hurry up a walkway that leads to a house. They're acting awfully excited, like it's the most wonderful house they've ever seen. Hattie yanks me out of the grass mid-pee, and we follow along up the front steps. She must be eager to check out the house, too. Oh boy, whatever is inside must be really amazing, like a pile of bones or a slab of meat. Fetch man opens the door, and we race in, full of anticipation. Hooray, hooray, I can hardly wait. I run a few circles around Hattie's legs as she unclips the leash. Hurry, Hattie, I bark. I have to find out what's so special. I search around, but all I see is a big empty space. And it smells totally boring, like stale air and fresh paint and new carpeting. It must get better, right? I start out trotting with my nose to the ground. Pretty soon, I'm sprinting down the hall on a perfect running surface that I wish would go on forever. But then I make a sharp turn and cruise into a bright and gleaming place where the floor feels different and smoother and slipperier. Suddenly, the floor gives way. My paws lose their grip and whoa! I'm skidding and skidding, my legs scrambling out of control, and then smack! I'm crumpled up against a tall and shiny box that's humming. Ouch! What happened? Hetty appears. Fenway! She cries, her voice sounding worried. She stoops next to me. She rubs my head and coos softly in my ear. Food lady rushes in and crouches next to us. She lifts my paws one by one, inspecting them like she's looking for fleas. I glance, glance down and growl at the wicked floor. Talk about a sneak attack. I never saw it coming. My defeat is so embarrassing. I can't even look at Hattie or Food Lady. Instead, I gaze around the room. It reminds me of our eating place at home, only much, much bigger and emptier. And worst of all, it does not smell anything like the eating place should. It really smells bad, like soap, which can only mean one thing, no food. Food lady gives me a quick rub, then abruptly goes to the counter. She starts opening drawers. She must be searching for nothing because that's what she's finding. 
and she's acting rather happy about it. Hattie continues stroking my back and kissing my neck. At least my short human understands how serious this problem is. She wraps her arms around me and rests her head on my back. Fetchman comes striding in like he owns the place. Hey, how are the humans moving around so easily? Does the wicked floor only terrorize dogs? Fetchman sit, sidles up next to Food Lady and wraps his arms around her waist. She tells him something, and, she, and he steps away, looking concerned. He turns to me, his face full of surprise, like he just realized the pathetic heap in the corner is actually a dog. He comes over and gives me a pat. Okay, fella? He swoops Hattie into his arms and lifts her up into the air. She explodes with a fit of giggles. How can they have fun at a time like this? Well, I know one thing. I'm not about to sit around waiting for the wicked floor to strike again. But how to get away? I need an idea. But it's hard to think when my tail is sagging and my ears are drooping. I gaze back at my humans, who are clearly busy with other things. Fetchman is hugging Hattie like crazy, and the food lady is at the stove turning the knobs, even though there's no food to cook. With no brilliant ideas and no help on the horizon, I try moving and barely manage to stand up. I clench my claws and take one step. Whoa! My legs slip out from underneath me again. I get back up, panting like a coward. I tense my whole body and try again. Then, oof! I'm splat back down on that glossy, sinister surface. It is pure evil. I just can't lay here. I must find a way to escape. I try again and again, slipping and scrambling the whole way. But finally, I make it through the doorway and onto the safety of the carpet. Whew! Back in the hall, it's all I can do to catch my breath. Thank goodness that's over. But right then, Fetchman glances over and evidently decides it's playtime. He gives Hattie a long look. He squats down and slaps his leg. Then way, he calls, his eyes staring at me, wide and bright. What's wrong with him? Does he think I've already forgotten about the wicked floor? There must be somewhere I can hide. I turn tail and race around the corner. I discover steps that go so high, I can't see where they end. But they probably end somewhere, and anywhere is better than the eating place with that wicked floor. In a flash, I'm all the way at the top, and somebody is right behind me. It's Hattie! I know that devilish sound of her footsteps. She wants to play Chase, our favorite game. Ha! You can't catch me, Hattie, I bark. I turn and take off back down the steps as fast as I can. Hattie loves Chase so much, sometimes I let her win. But this is not one of those times. Whew! I'm panting hard when I get to the bottom. But when I see a look over my shoulder, where is Hattie? I must go search for her. I scamper back up, step after step after step, my tongue hanging out my sides heaving. At last, I make it all the way to the top. Hattie! Hattie! I bark. I sure could use some water. But first things first, I need to find Hattie. Nose to the carpet, I follow her minty vanilla trail down another hallway. This one has doors. One room, and another, and another, and they're all enormous and empty. Except the last room is not empty. Hattie's inside. She's at the window. Is she looking for something? Hooray, hooray, I bark rushing in. I found you. Fenway, she turns and bends down. She scoops me into her arms. Best buddies, she sings, snuggling my fur. I lick her chin. We twirl, twirl around the huge empty room. Hattie stretches out an arm like she wants me to see how wonderful it is. Um, okay, it doesn't smell interesting at all. And there's absolutely nothing in it. Not even one single toy. Hattie hugs me tighter, swaying and dancing. Why is she so happy? Just then, a ding-dong sounds, floats up from downstairs. A doorbell! I squirt out of Hattie's arms. We run. We run through the hall and down the stairs. Someone's here! Someone's here! I bark. Fetchman and Food Lady are already at the front door, and a loud truck is outside. Despite my very vocal warnings, Fetchman lets some large stranger stroll right in. They're carrying big boxes, and they reek of coffee and sweat, just like, Hey, it's those same evil humans who stole our stuff. Fetchman welcomes them in like they belong here. Food Lady bosses them around to the empty rooms. Go away! There's nothing here to steal, I snarl. You already took it! But inside of my, 
Instead of appreciating my hard work, Fetchman smells annoyed. He pulls me farther from the door. As usual, he doesn't get it. Patty, he scolds. What? Does he actually think he's the one, she's the one at fault here? Fenway, she sings in a playful voice, like nothing is dangerous, like nothing dangerous is happening. She snatches me up into her arms. Let me handle this, I bark, thrashing, desperate to get free. I'm a professional. But she holds me tighter and breezes to the back of the house. As she opens a sliding door, I can hardly believe my eyes. <laughs>